Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants and soil, obviously. So if you like the sounds up, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, join our awesome crew, and let me know in the comments where in the world you hail from, just because it helps me engineer my videos a little bit better suited towards you guys. And trust me, it matters for indoor plants and out. It is uh, good to get an idea of where in the world you exist. For the winter, you guys know that I'm obviously not going to be able to do a lot of videos in the garden because I'm in a zone three and the snow has already decided to start flying. So for the winter time, I'm actually going to be doing more theory based topics. Um, so I'll be talking about soil amendments, different ways of gardening, house plants, house plant care, all that sort of stuff. And part of this is going to be a series on soil amendments. So if there's any specific amendment that you would like a video on, let me know in the comments down below because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select amendments based on what you guys are asking for and kind of the order that they're asked in and who has the most thumbs up versus how many have commented a certain type of additive and that's just how I'm going to base my video. So my first two that I'm going to be actually filming today is going to be on nematodes and then LECA only because nematodes are very fitting as some plants that were outside are being transitioned indoors. Some of you guys are actually getting into house plants, so the nematodes are gonna help you out a lot. And then the LECA side of things is also going to help out people who are bringing their pond plants in or people who are converting from potting soil to LECA. And it's just kind of a neat topic in general. So those are gonna be my first two. But in this video, we're gonna go through exactly what soil amendment means, what the definition of it is, and kind of give you a little bit of a backstory on one I talk about these products or when I talk about um, adding or subtracting certain things what I mean by that so you guys can get a bit of a broader view that will supplement the videos in the future going forward so first off the definition for soil amendment is pretty straightforward soil amendment refers to anything that alters the soil nutrient or physicality wise in my case I'm also going to add the definition of biological control methods or just organic gardening methods for pest control in general for both indoor plants and out. The reason why I'm adding that in as a soil amendment because I kind of characterize it as a soil amendment since a lot of the pest controls that I use and a lot of the pest controls I'm adding about or talking about are actually ones that are added into the soil whether at the time of potting or when you have the issue itself. I think it's really important to talk about soil less medium because technically anything that doesn't land on the textural triangle, which I'll insert a photo of here, which is something that soil scientists actually use to determine what type of soil is in a specific landmass. So soil less medium essentially refers to anything that can grow plants due to a specific set of gas exchange requirements, water, like hydrological control elements, ability to sustain or hold some sort of fertility, et cetera, and so forth. So that is a soil less medium, meaning soil less mediums could be a rag. Literally, it could be a rag, a sponge. It can be anything so long as it can sustain plant life. So soil less medium is going to be called soil. It's going to be referred to as soil amendment or um, whatever the case is. And the reason why I'm doing that is because in my world or when it comes to potted plants, house plants, in my mind, it's all, it is soil less, like it doesn't have clay or silt or sand in it. But at the end of the day, it's essentially, it's growing something. So it's soil in my mind. I'd be getting too caught up on peat moss, um, coconut choir, like I wouldn't, be getting too caught up on the fact that those are technically soilless mediums. Um, don't get hung up on the fact that people will say you're doing technically you're doing semi hydroponics if you're using like a potting soil or a coconut choir. Just forget all that. It's potting soil and let's just leave it. Let's not complicate things. Um, the only one that I would refer to, refer to as soilless would be the LECA. And that is only if you're doing a purely LECA format. And I'm gonna show you guys actually ways to do LECA that's not fully 
uh, semi-hydroponic, it's actually like a mix between the two. So while technically potting soil, um, coconut coir, anything that doesn't essentially contain dirt that you would find outside is considered semi-hydroponic, it's also considered soilless growing um, in the world of science, but for ease of speech and talking to each other, we're just gonna totally forget that that even exists. In this case, soil is anything that plants can go into. When we talk about adding soil amendments, we're talking about essentially changing one of those three factors. So we're either changing the physicality of the soil, we're changing the nutrient holding capacity of the soil or the amount of nutrient and fertility that's in the soil. And then thirdly, we're actually going to be changing um, the biological side or some sort of natural cycle that happens within the soil. So when we're adding soil amendments, those are the three things we are changing. So every time I do um, a video or I talk about a new soil amendment, we're gonna be talking about what it does to those three factors. Reason being is because just because you have have a soil amendment um, that changes the physicality for the better it actually may put a detriment on the microbe capacity for example or if you do something that's great for the microbes it may harm something like the nutrient cycle so there's a give and a take to all soil amendments you need to weigh those uh, amendments and how much or how little you want to use the, of them based on those three factors and your situation and last but probably the most important when i'm talking about soil amendments when i'm going to be making individual videos on all of these it is up to you guys to determine how much of what you want to put in i'm not going to give you a recipe i'm not going to give you a formula because it's not going to work i can't tell you that half a cup of wood chips half a cup of vermiculite and you know one cup of manure I, there's no recipe and i know that there's a lot of influencers out there that have their potting soil recipe and they tout it and they um they'll sell it to you but in my mind as a soil scientist there's no such thing as the golden ticket the reason for that is mostly because your soil that you choose to mix up or the mix that you decide works best for you is completely dependent on your situation. So whether you're an overwater or an underwater, whether you like terracotta pots or plastic pots or ceramic pots, how much sunlight those plants are getting, what kind of plants they are, how old those plants are, how many plants are in one container, all those things factor into how you're going to make your soil mix up and I can do a houseplant tour for you guys, but if I took you on a houseplant tour, you're going to very quickly realize I have zero recipe to how I plant my plants. My plants get planted solely based on what room they're in, how much light they're getting, how many plants are in that pot, whether it's a terracotta versus a plastic, all those factor, all that factors into what I decide to do even if um, if it has disease or not, if it's more prone to disease or not, if it's a cutting, a baby plant versus a mature, all those different things factor into how much or what soil amendments I add. So I think it's really important what I'm trying to stress throughout this entire series is follow your instinct and follow what you've learned on this channel to help you determine what works for you. Um, don't fall for this is the best potting soil mix you could possibly use. It always works for me because it may work for you, but there's a very high likelihood that you're going to experience some level of issue with that mix, um, whether that be it's too dry or too moist or whatever the case is. So I'm going to give you guys the tools for every single amendment to help you gauge that and gauge whether or not it's too much or too little and how you want to go about working this into your um your plant's life essentially. So this was a super quick kind of what's coming up and what you're gonna be seeing in the next little bit off and on. Like I said, drop the amendments that you would like to see videos on first because those ones will be the ones that I select first. I am pre-filming nematodes and LECA. So anything that's outside of that, please let me know. Um, and I'm talking literally anything. If you see something just crazy, like marbles, like if you wanted a marble, using marbles as a soil amendment, 
let me know seriously let me know or crushed uh terracotta pox like all that stuff technically is a soil amendment so i'm going to be busting a few myths i'm going to be busting the rocks in the bottom myth in this series too just because that's like a whole that's a whole thing um so yeah I hope you found this helpful. I hope this gives you some context and a little bit of ability to gauge the videos coming forward and some info on how this is all gonna roll out in the future. And just to give you guys the tools you need when you're looking at potting soil mixes or you're watching other people's videos and help you gauge uh, reality from, you know, what do you, snake oil? Is that, that's what it's called, right? When someone's trying to sell you, yeah, like snake oil fixes, so there use your brains use what you've learned on this channel um about cation exchange capacity smell like all that stuff use all that when determining this sort of thing i'm gonna try to plug in as much common sense into the soil amendment series as possible and i will talk to you guys next time bye